So as was mentioned, I'm going to be covering today Artifactory Open Source, um, which is the addition that JFrog offers uh, as part of our open source offerings. Um, I am John Peterson, your speaker today, a partner engineer here at JFrog. And so what is, you know, what is, what is it? What is Artifactory Open Source Edition? So it's your, it's your typical artifact repository management software. It's the open source version of JFrog's enterprise artifactory software, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, all versions of artifactory are actually built off this common source code. So don't think that, you know, you're getting some different version of the source that's way scaled down. It, this is actually the real source code that Artifactory is built off of. It's just that additional features are then overlaid on top of it um, for some of the premium, more premium features. And so what can it accomplish? So it supports out of the bat, out of the box, uh, Maven, Gradle, Ivy, SPT, and generic repositories. Uh, it supports users, groups, permissions, all the typical role-based authentic authorization controls um, that you're familiar with. In addition, it also supports builds and build infos, which are quite a powerful feature, which I'll show you here in a second. And so who's really the audience of this uh, particular offering? Um, so in general, it's people who want a free on-prem version of Artifactory. In addition, um, DevOps, DevOps practitioners who want to leverage our generic repositories through the JFrog CLI to enhance their automation. And before you jump in, though, what are some of the things that you should consider, right? So deploying Artifactory open source, there's various infrastructure requirements and maintenance. So that's definitely something to be aware of. Um, we're, we're handing you an open source version of the software, but you're still responsible for your own infrastructure uh, making sure you have the minimum system requirements as well as maintaining that infrastructure. And there's ways around this, such as cloud-based deployments, but regardless, it's still considered an on-prem version for your particular um, company or individual. And so the other thing you really want to call out is there's also software maintenance. So just because we're giving you the current, the most up-to-date current version of Artifactory open source, uh, within a month, there's going to be new versions, more likely than not, that will come out. And so you'll be responsible for the software maintenance in terms of upgrades, in terms of all the various day one plus type of activities that can occur in the software lifecycle management of any of your typical, you know, software installations that you might be familiar with. And so maybe that doesn't sound good. Maybe you don't want to deal with the infrastructure requirements. Maybe you don't want to be responsible for upgrading. So we also offer the JFrog free tier now. And so this is a very powerful offering because this is actually our enterprise grade software, Artifactory, X-Ray, and pipelines. So what's included in free tier? So it's the actual Artifactory enterprise. It's the full feature offering of Artifactory, as well as X-Ray. Um, it's the full feature offering of X-Ray. So it's a robust component level security scanner. And in addition, we also have pipelines, which is a powerful CI/CD tool that's built directly into the JFrog platform. And this really allows you to end and manage Artifactory, X-Ray, distribution, pipelines, all of this you can manage now through this powerful CI/CD tool that's built into the platform. And in addition, the really thing I wanna call out is if you do uh, go the route of free tier versus uh, open source, JFrog will actually manage and support your instances for free. So you have a full production grade DevOps support team who's there 24 seven to manage these instances, resolve any issues that might occur. And that way you don't even have to basically perform that sunk cost of maintenance and maintaining all of these uh, various software installations. And so how do you get it? Signing up for free tier is very easy. Um, as you can see, there's a link right there. No credit card is required. Um, you can go ahead and sign up. Just provide basically your name, your company, your email address, and you're able to sign up for free. Um, you can pick which cloud you like, whether it's Azure, AWS, GCP. So it's offered on all the variety of clouds. And so it's a very easy solution for people who don't want to actually handle maintenance of the infrastructure and software. And so 
for regardless of whether you went artifactory OSS or you went free tier, um, the JFrog ecosystem really supports artifactory as a whole. And so why is this important? So artifactory OSS comes with the entire ecosystem around artifactory enterprise. So you get the artifactory user plugins, you get the JFrog CLI, you get various uh, build tool plugins, such as the Artifactory Maven plugin, which I'll, I'll demo here in a second, the Artifactory Jenkins plugin, and then there's the entire ecosystem of communities. So the J Center, Chart Center, all of the centers that kind of support the overall JFrog ecosystem. And so I'm gonna dive into a demo now. And so what is this demo gonna cover? In this demonstration, we're going to actually install Artifactory OSS. We're going to configure Artifactory OSS. We're going to create some local repositories. We're going to create some virtual repositories. I'll deploy, uh, deploy a Maven project to Artifactory OSS. And then we'll also deploy some Artifactory built infos utilizing the Artifactory Maven plugin. And so what I want to first do is I'm gonna jump over to GKE and I just spun up a brand new cluster. And so I'm gonna actually go ahead and grab that now. And so that was actually the Zoom link. So make sure I can actually copy paste correctly. And so now you'll see, I just basically spun up this cluster right now. There's literally nothing in this cluster as of right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually deploy Artifactory OSS. And so I'm, I'm deploying it into a Kubernetes-based installation. So I'm gonna use the Helm chart. So I'm actually able to, uh, I've already added JFrog as a repo. So you can see here, I've already added the JFrog repo. If I needed to do that, I could actually do a, a repo add and then the name and then the URL. And that will add this repository into my Helm, at which point I can then go ahead and do a repo update to make sure I have the latest charts. Once I have the latest charts, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look for Artifactory OSS chart. And so I'm going to search for uh, Artifactory OSS. And so what we'll see here is we're going to see Artifactory OSS listed under the official JFrog chart. Uh, Helm, Helm repo. And so you can see here, uh, there is the JFrog Artifactory OSS. It's actually on version 7.10.2 of Artifactory. And so at this point, I can actually install this Helm chart. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Helm install Artifactory OSS, JFrog slash Artifactory OSS. And since this is Artifactory OSS, there are no additional requirements. So typically speaking, when you install a, a Helm chart for Artifactory, you'll need to specify things such as the licenses. Obviously that doesn't apply here. Um, the one thing I do wanna call out is if you guys are planning on using TLS, you will um, need to supply a TLS secret name. Uh, so that's, that's probably the only thing that you will actually need to install Artifactory OSS besides the Helm chart itself is you'll need an actual uh, DNS and TLS cert, assuming you want to set up SSL. For me, I don't even really care. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it directly. And so this will then go ahead and spin up Artifactory OSS in my Kubernetes based environment. And so what I can now do is I'll go ahead and list out first the pods that got spun up and I'll explain a little bit here what's going on. So when you deploy Artifactory, Artifactory needs a database. And so you'll see that there is a Postgres SQL that's also coming up with this particular Artifactory as well as an Nginx. The Nginx is going to act as the reverse proxy for Artifactory um, if you set it up that way, or it will just act as the proxy to the web interface to Artifactory. And so in addition to the pods that are going to get spun up, there's also going to be an external load balancer, um, a network load balancer that will be deployed into my Kubernetes. I will then be able to access that public IP address and actually access the Artifactory OSS that just finished spinning up. 
And so I'll give this a second here uh, to spin up. Uh, and while this is spinning up, the one thing I do want to uh, call out, right, is some of the things for Artifactory that typically occur during installation, such as the, the domain name and the cert, I have already set up in another cluster um, just so that we didn't have to wait as long. Um, I've already set up my own cluster here as well. And so I'm gonna be actually uh, demoing off of this cluster so that way you guys can see um, everything set up end to end. And so as we wait for this to finish spinning up, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab that public IP address as well. And so you can see here's the IP address um, that got uh, exposed based upon the network load balancer. And so if we give it just one more second, so I'll just do a dash W so we can wait. And while we wait, I'll also just go ahead and uh, tail the log so you guys can see kind of what's going on, uh, what's going on with the particular Artifactory instance. And you can see Artifactory is coming up, very typical. Uh, of the logs. Um, if you see this kind of uh, format, this is generally a good indication. Once you see the Artifactory OSS and the version dump, um, it's a good indication that you've successfully installed Artifactory. Uh, again, for OSS, it's, it's a much simpler installation process where you basically just directly run the Helm chart. So it's, it's not very um, impressive, uh, but for much more complex Artifactories, things can generally go, long, go wrong a lot easier, right? And so at this point, um, Artifactory is almost up. Uh, I see it now joining the cluster. It's running the final jobs, spinning up the cron. And now at this point, we should see the Nginx and the Artifactory pods uh, final, finalize. And once that happens, then I'm gonna go ahead and load this Artifactory so that way you guys can see. Um, the artifactory that I so here we go. We just got the message. All services started successfully. We can see the artifactory has just finished, and then the last step is the nginx. And once the nginx has come up, now we can actually go directly to this IP address, and you can see we have just spun up an artifactory. And so now, typical, I can log in with the default admin password. It's going to log me in. It's going to take me again. This is going to complain because admin password has been part of a breach. Um, so we always recommend users. In fact, we require users to change their password the first time they install. And I'm also going to use a less than secure password again, just because it's a demonstration. And so now it's going to ask me for various things, such as the base URL. A lot of this stuff you can actually skip. So I'm going to skip all of that. And so the first thing that you'll see, right, when you have successfully deployed Artifactory um, is this onboarding page. This onboarding page is very helpful for new users. Um, if you've never used Artifactory before, I highly recommend you walking through the onboarding. This will actually, we're going to walk through this right now because um, this will take us through the steps that I promised you guys, which is after we've installed, we're going to start to configure Artifactory. We're going to create a local repo. A virtual repo, etc. And so I'll go back here. Um, a few things I want to call out uh, before we start to create the repo and everything else. Um, I'm gonna actually going to save this. And so one of the major things that uh, typically happens is we need to set up uh, users, groups, and permissions, right? Um, I highly encourage folks not to use the admin user. Um, and for that reason, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new user. I'm going to make a user as myself. Um, you can set up this user as an administrator. Um, that's fine. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and make this new user here. And I'll go ahead and say, OK, since I'm an admin user, so I have at least made a new user under myself. Typically speaking, you're not going to want everybody to be an admin user. So what you'll probably end up doing is instead of just making one off users, You'll come in here. We'll first define a group. We'll assign per, we'll assign permissions actually to a group, and then we'll assign users to the group. And that's how you can perform the role-based author, authorization controls um, across Artifactory to ensure the right level of permissions um, for groups as well as users. 
And so just to show you guys uh, the permissions, right? Permissions are a very full feature uh, artifactory. You can actually control repositories, um, remote repositories, distribution repositories. You can apply it to builds. So it's a very powerful uh, feature set that I really recommend that folks check out. And so that's configuring your artifactory is making sure that you have users, groups, permissions all set up. Assuming that you've already done all of that onboarding of setting up your users and your groups that you want them to use your artifactory. At this point, the next step uh, for a binary repository manager is to obviously create repositories for your binaries, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to first Artifactory supports a variety of different types of repositories. So I'm going to quickly explain which, which each one does. Um, and you can see it here on screen as well. Um, so a local repository, this is your most typical type of repository. These are um, repositories that actually live in Artifactory themselves. You deploy artifacts and binaries into these repositories and they're stored in Artifactory local to that specific Artifactory. A remote repository, this is probably the repository type that most people are most familiar with. If you've ever used Maven Central or JCenter, um, these are your remote repositories. So these are actually repositories that sit there out there on the internet. Um, and these are the ones that you'll actually go and download your dependency jars from, such as a Maven Central or a JCenter again. Um, and so these will be set up uh, automatically um, typically through the onboarding process, we'll typically set up JCenter for you. But if you have additional remote repositories, you can also set those up through Artifactory. And so the first type I'm going to do is create a local repository. As you can see here, since I've deployed um, Artifactory OSS, I am limited down to just basically uh, generic Gradle, Ivy, Maven, or SBT. If I was using the JFrog free tier, though, I would be able to create any of these repository types. Um, so that's just something I want to call out. So I'm gonna create a, a Maven repository, a local Maven repository. I'm gonna call it lib uh, snapshot uh, local. And at this point, um, I can also apply various uh, permissions, other things uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this local repository. And you can say, okay, it's gonna instruct me on how I can add users. Since I only have one administrative user, uh, I don't really need to add any users because admins already have permissions on everything. And so the next step, I wanna create a remote repository. I wanna be able to download jars from the internet such as Maven Central or JCenter. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a remote repository and you can see it's already saying here's the JCenter URL. So I'll give it the name of JCenter and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So I now have this remote repository. The next step, so you're going, okay, well now you have two repositories. What, what good is that, right? Like we can only point at one. So how's that gonna be helpful in my naming settings.xml? That's a great question. Uh, the next type of repository is gonna solve that for us. So virtual repositories are a very powerful type that are able to combine both local and remote repositories into them. And so I'm going to actually create a Maven re virtual repository. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one actually lib snapshot. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to include both the local as well as the JCenter. And then I'm going to say that the uh, default deployment repository is lib snapshot. And so what does this do? Well, what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to connect to this virtual repository in my settings.xml. And then what I'm going to do is anytime I deploy to this repository, it's automatically going to store the artifacts in lib snapshot local. But if I happen to do, uh, let's say, a Maven dependency colon resolve, what it's going to do is it's going to actually reach out to JCenter to download all of those dependencies. And so now I'm able to deploy and retrieve all of my artifacts against one virtual repository. So I'll go ahead and click Save. And at this point, now what I've done is I've really basically successfully set up the lib snapshots. In addition, what I would typically do is I would go and set up lib release as well, and which I've already done on this instance over here. So I don't want everybody to have to sit around and wait for me to do the exact same procedures again. You'll see here, I have the lib release, the lib snapshot, as well as the virtual and uh, the virtual repository for both lib snapshot and lib release. And since I've used 
this uh, um, instance already for doing some dependency resolutions, you'll see there's a whole bunch of jars that I've already downloaded um, from JCenter, which are now being stored, um, being cached in my artifactory. And so this is a very important thing. This will help um, in particular um, to reduce your bandwidth, your network bandwidth. Once artifactories has, once your artifactory instance has downloaded that jar from the internet, it's stored locally in artifactory for quick resolutions again. And so that's great. I've set up all of this. Now, now what, right? So I've created my local repository. I've created my virtual repository. Now I want to deploy a Maven project to this, this artifactory, right? And so to do that, uh, how, how would I get this to work, right? So the easiest way to actually get this to work is to come into Artifactory itself, go to the particular repository, and we have this button called Set Me Up. And so if you click on this button, what you can actually do is give it your password, and then you can tell it to generate the Maven settings.xml. And so what this will do is this will actually generate a settings.xml which you can then take and then fill in the correct information for the username, as well as encrypting the password. And then once you have all of this information set up, you'll then need to store this settings.xml inside of your .m2 folder. Or if you're building on a particular Java project, like for example, I am, I'm actually storing this settings.xml local to the actual Maven project. And then I'm and applying uh, various environment variables. So I'm actually overriding these values based upon environment variables. So this user variable, password variable, um, as well as the URL variable will then get overwritten. And then that's how I'm then able to use this settings.xml in my project. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go into my project here and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys very quickly uh, just deploying this. And so I'm gonna run this command here, maven clean deploy. I'm gonna actually gonna skip the test cause I'm actually just running JUnit4 just to show you guys what this project is. This is basically a very simple maven project where I have basically the source code for JUnit, nothing that I've written or changed directly. Um, the only thing I did was I made it a child project to my palm. And inside of my palm, what do I have in this palm? Well, the main thing I have in this palm is the uh, distribution management. So this section, so that way it knows how to deploy my, my jars to the correct artifactory, as well as the artifactory Maven plugin. And so this plugin is what will actually deploy the artifactory build info anytime I run that Maven deploy command. And so you'll see that I also have to specify my username, my password, as well as the build number into this individual artifactory instance. Um, again, these can be specified via environment variables, a whole bunch of different strategies. But the idea is, again, not to actually store any of these kind of type of credentials in the actual source. So right now, we're just specifying these as Maven um, parameters. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now run this. And you'll see I'm actually specifying it with dash D, the username, the password, as well as the build number. And I'm going to run this now. And so what this will do is this is going to go into that JUnit4, again, just the github.com JUnit4 source code. It's going to compile that source code. Oh, and I actually have a SSL error. So I apologize. I actually have Zscaler on. So it's giving me some network communication issues. So let me disable Zscaler. And so if I run this again without Zscaler on, I can actually get to the internet. And so now that I run this without any network hiccups, what will happen is it's gonna run this, it's gonna compile it. You're gonna see here, it's deploying the artifact out. And so this is where it's actually shipping the jar, uh, my parent palm, as well as the JUnit4 palm. And then in addition, it also deployed the, the build info. Right, and so you can see here it deployed the build info, and it was build number nine. So if I go back into this artifactory, at this point, what I can do is I can actually go in, and I can look at this lib local, uh, and lib release, and you can see I deployed this ATO Maven parent because I marked it as a real version. It showed up in lib release instead of snapshot, um, and so you can see here's my um, 
palm that was deployed. And in addition, there's also the build. And so you can see the last build number is nine. This is very powerful for an open source edition of Art Factory. We give you the entire build info um, and the builds. So that way you're able to, regardless of you know who's building this or from where, you're able to actually go into an individual build such as this one. You can see which modules have been published. And then in addition, what you can actually see is this build info JSON. And so this is a very, this, this JSON is very powerful. It's captured a whole bunch of information, right? Um, about my specific computer, such as my, uh, what type of computer, Mac OS X, what are the uh, parameters that were, uh, the command line args that were passed? What was the JDK version that was used? All of this is very important information. I know, I don't know how many times I've heard somebody say, well, the build worked on my, my computer, but it doesn't work over here. Um, so this is the type of information that you could use to actually see, you know, hey, why is this build behaving differently on this computer versus this server over here? Well, this build info will give you all of the information that you need so you can actually diff the build. And in addition, look at the actual SHAs that are produced to make sure that this build was actually reproduced the same regardless of what environment it was on. And so that is covering, that covered basically the Artifactory OSS demo. Um, in this demo, again, what did we cover? Installing Artifactory OSS, configuring Artifactory OSS, creating a local repo, creating a virtual repo, deploying a Maven project, and deploying a built info. So that's all great. You know, Artifactory's up. I'm using my Artifactory. I'm happy. But what about day one plus activities, right? So Artifactory OSS leverages the same ecosystem as Artifactory Enterprise. Um, so one of the things that uh, typically people run into is they need to do some kind of cleanup, right? I deployed all these artifacts. You might have seen, you know, I had a whole bunch of versions. Some of them were bad. So how can I solve that? So Artifactory user plugins, in particular, the Artifact Cleanup will allow you to basically install a user plugin into Artifactory. Um, these have been around for a very long time, uh, over five years, um, across multiple major rev uh, revision releases. Uh, and so Artifactory user plugins are a very mature and stable ecosystem. Um, and so you can deploy the Artifact Cleanup user plugin, or you can even build your own user plugins, right? Um, it's designed so that you can extend the ecosystem yourself. And in addition, we also provide JFrog's Artifactory log analytics, completely free and open source. And so we link off to the GitHub directly here. And so this GitHub, you'll see here, everything is open source, whether it's our vendors. So we support um, Splunk, Elastic, Prometheus, Datadog, all of our Fluent files, everything is all open source. So there's nothing that we're hiding from you. You're able to utilize all of that. And so you can use Artifactory's log analytics to deploy an EFK stack and send logs to Elastic. And so I'm gonna quickly show you guys setting this up. And so in this particular demo, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna actually deploy an Elastic. I'm gonna deploy a Kibana. I'm gonna install Fluent D. I'm gonna send logs to the Elastic. And then we're also gonna install the dashboard into Kibana. And so this will give you a robust log analytics solution on top of your Artifactory OSS. Um, and again, all of this is open source and freely available on the internet. And so first thing I wanna do, right, is to deploy an Elastic. If I come back up here, and I'm gonna go ahead and close this one just for making it a little bit easier to consume. And so if I come in here and I look at what pods I have deployed again, all I have is my Artifactory, uh, my Nginx and my Postgres. So I'm gonna go into ATO. What I've already done is I've already cloned this entire repository. Um, I recommend that you use dash dash recursive um, as there are some sub, sub modules, get sub modules. And to make sure that you clone everything, you should use the recursive flag, which I've already done. So what I can do is I can come into my log analytics folder. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my log vendors and I'm gonna go into Elastic because this is the one that I want, right? And in addition, I'm also gonna go into my readme for Elastic uh, here. 
And so you can click on this and you can see all of our versions that we support uh, across the products. And then there's additional setup and instructions on how you can actually set this up. And so if I go down, there's actually a section for an EFK demo. Very helpful. This will get you guys set up very quickly. And so I'm going to actually go ahead and run these commands directly right here inside of this folder so that I have the same YAML. And so at this point, what it's going to do is it's going to deploy the Elasticsearch config map, the service, as well as the stateful set. And so then now we need to go ahead and wait for the Elastic cluster. Oops, clicked the wrong guy. Sorry about that. And so wait for the Elastic cluster to roll out. Once Elastic has rolled out, then we're going to go ahead and set up the passwords for our new Elasticsearch cluster. Once we've set up the passwords, then we're going to deploy deploy Kibana. And once we have deployed Kibana, then we're going to install FluentD into the Artifactory to ship the logs from Artifactory OSS into Elastic. And then we'll last step deploy the dashboard, which is also open source. We'll deploy the dashboard into Kibana, the same dashboard that our enterprise customers use um, to then monitor our Artifactory instance. And so while we wait for this to finish, um, give this just one second and Elasticsearch can take a little bit of time. So let's just double check. Yep, the Elasticsearch cluster is going to come here in one second. And so I have already done most of this setup. And uh, so what I will show you guys is actually here in one second. The Kibana, right? So I've already deployed this Kibana. Um, I've already set all this up. So I'm going to log in while we wait. So that way you guys can see, kind of see this in action, so to speak. And so here's the Kibana. What I'll be able to do is I'll be able to actually search here. And so you can see, uh, this is what happens is once we have this integration set up end to end, we'll be able to send our logs directly into Kibana, as you see here. And so let's let this finish. And so now that Elastic has finished, the next step that we need to do is we need to set up the passwords. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this command here uh, and run it. And what this will do is this will drop into the Elastic Search setup passwords uh, in an interactive fashion. And so give this a second to spin up. And it looks like I'm on. There we go. So it was still it was still starting up. That's why it gave me some network errors. But now that it's running, I can actually set the passwords up. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same super secure password over for all of these. And so once I have set up the password for all of these Elastic systems, it's going to ask me for it, I think, one more time after this. All right, it's going to go ahead and change the passwords. And so at this point, now what I can do is I can go ahead and set up uh, the Kibana. And so I will need to go ahead and do this and deploy all those. And then now I will go ahead and wait for the Kibana to finish deploying. So let's wait for it for one second. And so now the next step uh, after we've already, so we've just deployed Elastic in Kibana using the commands directly from the log analytics uh, folder. I mean, uh, the, the GitHub repo. Uh, and so the next step is the installation of FluentD. So what is FluentD? FluentD is the logging agent that we're, we use to actually ship the logs from Artifactory into Elasticsearch. And so what we'll need to do is we're going to actually need to drop into the pod uh, for uh, Elasticsearch. And it looks like I actually didn't do something right. So what I'm going to do is quickly go back to the cluster I have already set up. Uh, apologize, one second. 
And this is why I have already set this up just in case anything happened. And so we'll go ahead and jump into this cluster because it looks like I probably didn't apply the password correctly. And so once I jump into this cluster, what you'll see is I already have the Kibana up and running as expected. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and drop into Artifactory OSS. And so if I drop into Artifactory OSS, what I'm going to need to do is I'm actually going to need to install Fluentd. The easiest way to install Fluentd um, directly as the Artifactory user is to actually use um, our log analytics. We provide uh, a, an installation path. So if we go back, uh, what you'll see is on the main log analytics, we have a Fluent installer. You can actually download this installer, which I've already done here. Uh, and so you can see the same tar GZ. You unzip the tar GZ. And at that point, you have the entire Fluent ecosystem installed. Um, and so what you will want to do um, is to test it out, is you can run it directly against the test comp that will be there. And once you've tested it out and confirmed that Fluent is working as expected, you see the dummy message. Um, the next step will be to actually set up your elastic configuration. So to get the elastic configuration, um, it was inside of the uh, GitHub repo. So again, if I go back to the GitHub repo and I go to my log vendor, which I'm using elastic, what you'll see is there's actually a fluent conf.rt. And you'll also see it here as well, uh, that Artifactory is supported. And so I can actually click on this RT call. I copy it over here, which I've already done uh, for the sake of time. And so at this point, then what I can do is I can actually run this directly against this. And this is what will then ship my logs over uh, to Elastic. And so I've already set this up as a background process. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this additional installation and just to make sure that it's still running. So you see, I already have Fluent E. It's already running. And so at this point, I've already set up uh, Fluent to ship logs to my Elastic. The next step is to set up uh, Kibana. So to set up Kibana, what you'll need to do is you'll need to set up the index patterns. The first index pattern will come in. What you'll want to do is you'll want to create a new index pattern off of Unified. Once you've created the index pattern, the next step is to load the save object. So what you'll want to do is import our JSON. So if I go back and if I go back to all things open and I go to the log analytics and then I go into the log vendors again, I go to Elastic, you'll see there's actually this export.nd.json. Again, this is in the readme, um, but this is the file that you'll use. I can go ahead and then click import. You'll see it successfully imported the 40 objects. And so at this point, I've now imported the JFrog dashboard, all of the objects into a Kibana. I've set up the log analytics to ship to Elastic. And so I can actually now go into the dashboard itself. And so what I should be able to do is click on this. And oops, if I actually click on dashboard, sorry. Click on dashboards, you'll see the JFrog dashboard. I can go into the JFrog dashboard. I can look, I can change the time frames. I can do a whole bunch of number of other things. So I'll go and change this time frame to the last 24 hours. I'll hit refresh. And so you can see here in the last 24 hours, um, I've uploaded some data. Clearly, I was doing some more testing at these particular times. Um, in addition, um, there's also the artifactory errors. The dashboard also covers X-ray, which doesn't is not unfortunately included in OSS. Uh, but since this is the enterprise grade dashboard, you're going to see widgets that are for the entire uh, our enterprise suite of offering. Uh, and so you can see here, here's the accepted deploys by my username. Uh, and so this is what's really provided is this ability to monitor our factory um, through Kibana, through Elastic. And all of this, again, is free, open source and available. And so Let's go ahead and jump back to the presentation. And so I've shown you now setting up the Artifactory Log Analytics demo where we've deployed an Elastic, we deployed a Kibana, we installed a Fluent, we sent the logs to Elastic, and then last thing we installed the dashboard into Kibana. And so bringing this all together, um, we actually have the JFrog free tier, which actually offers the X-Ray Enterprise robust component 
level security scanner. It also has the pipelines built into it as well. So how can we take advantage of these offerings, right? So there's no reason why you couldn't use Artifactory OSS with free tier. And so if a quick example is you could, instead of Maven deploy to Artifactory OSS, you could do a Maven deploy to free tier. You could use pipelines to potentially build release candidates off of your snapshot builds. Um, we could run and analyze the X-ray security scans. And then we can also have pipelines to deploy to production. And since this is all free, um, we get to utilize all of these tools with Artifactory OSS at no cost with no credit card required. And so the last thing I wanna call out uh, is if you don't wanna use JFrog free tier, but I, I still wanna be able to uh, use, let's say Helm and Docker, um, because you know those are the type of uh, production deployments that we're doing now. Uh, we're going to a con uh, containerized kind of world uh, where everything is being deployed into a Kubernetes via Helm charts. Um, and so I really need to, uh, I really need to be able to support my, my Java project that's built with Java, uh, built with uh, Maven or Gradle, but I really need to support it into a Kubernetes, right? And so we offer JFrog container registry um, and there's no reason why, um, again, you can't use Artifactory OSS plus JFrog container registry. And if you combine these two offerings, it basically allows you to support Maven, Gradle, Ivy, SBT, Chenier, Helm, and Docker. Uh, and as you can see here, um, why would you use JFrog Container Registry versus some of these other registries out there? Um, our registry has Helm built into it. So that's a very competitive advantage, right? Being able to deploy your Helm charts as well as your Docker images into the same registry um, is very useful. Again, we also support the concept of remote and virtual repositories. So you're able to set up JFrog's chart center as your remote repository, able to set up your local repository and then use a virtual repository like what I showed you guys for Maven, but this time for your Helm charts. Uh, and then it also, in addition, has built-in OSS vulnerability scanning, um, which is not always offered on all the other uh, offerings across the, the cloud space. So thank you uh, for coming. Um, in this talk, uh, we covered again, Artifactory OSS plus free tier. We also briefly touched on JCR and how you could use that for Helm and Docker. Um, the slides are available at the link below. Uh, and thank you so much. And I hopefully you enjoyed uh, this presentation.